Hello, my friend. Good to see you. How are you? Great. So listen, today I'm going to give you lots of ideas about how to practice speaking English when you are alone at home. Home alone. <laughs> Sounds like a film. Are you ready? Let's do it. Hello, and if you don't know me, my name is Keith. I run the Keith Speaking Academy and the YouTube um, channel English Speaking Success. So listen, today we're going to be looking at how to practice speaking English when you are alone at home. It's not so easy for many people, right? Um, because maybe you don't have any native English speakers in your city. Maybe there are no tourists that you can go and harass. Um, maybe there are no groups where you can locally, where you can go and chat and do English, speak English. Um, and maybe you're not ready to go on Skype and try and find some random English person to chat with, somebody you don't know. I mean, that can be quite hard, especially if you're a little bit shy like me. Um, so what I want to do today is share with you lots of ideas about how you can practice speaking when you're on your own at home alone. Right. Good. Now, if you do know me, you may be thinking, what's that strange orange block over there? <laughs> that wasn't there before. True. And it's this is my meditating mat sometimes where I sit and meditate sometimes. I don't sit on the wall. I'm just tidying at the moment. So I couldn't find a place to put it. So right now it's over there. <clears throat> OK. The truth about speaking is that, yes, you can watch videos, you can watch films, you can listen to podcasts. All of that is great. But at some point you need to start speaking and you can speak on your own. But also later, you'll need to start interacting and practicing speaking with people. But that's not always easy to do. And so right now today, I'm going to focus on some really practical, simple activities you can do when you're on your own at home to start practicing speaking. And just to add that this video is actually sponsored by Cambly. Cambly are a fantastic online platform for you to learn English and practice English. They have native English speaking teachers. Um, you can choose any time, any teacher. It's really flexible and easy. And if you are studying IELTS, they do have online IELTS courses um, that you can follow, right? Lots of materials, lots of ideas. So a big thank you to, to Cambly. Thank you guys for sponsoring the video. Um, and also, if you are new to Cambly for the first time users, you can get a discount. Um, just use the code. It's down here below, um, Keith Disc, and you can get a discount on all of their plans, whether they are monthly, three monthly or for the year. Great. More about that later. But right now, let's get into these ideas about practicing speaking English. So the first technique um, is called speak into the mirror. And this is really useful, but it's really, really simple, right? It's, it's easy because you can do this first thing in the morning when you're brushing your teeth or you, or you can't speak and brush your teeth, but just before <laughs> you brush your teeth. And in the evening before going to bed, when you wash your face, what do you mean? You don't wash your face in the evening. Why not? <laughs> My mother always told me, make sure you wash your face, clean behind your ears, wash your neck, scrub your neck. Yeah, wash your face before you go to bed. It takes all the dust and pollution off your face, apparently. Anyway, that's a great time that you can do it. And this is good because the key to learning and preparing for IELTS is habit right? And if you can attach your learning to an existing habit, brushing your teeth or washing your face, then it makes it much easier. Now, I used to do this when I was um, learning Chinese. And in the morning, I would, after brushing my teeth, I would just have a few sentences talking about what I'm going to do 
today, in the future, right? 今天我要去公园儿，呃，我想，我想什么？我想去买点菜。对了<笑> ，right? So today. Um, I'm going to go to the park. I need to go to the supermarket. I'm going to buy some vegetables.、Um, I'm meeting Jack at six o'clock. I might go to the cinema. All in the future. Brilliant. And then, and then at the end of the day, you can talk about what you did or what you have done. Right.、Um, Today I went to the park.、Um, I played football. I went shopping. In the end, I've done a lot. It has been a good day, right? Past tense, present perfect as well. So you can see, your it's actually great to practice different tenses. It's a bit like writing your diary at the end of the day, right? Which is also a great way to practice writing. But this is speaking in front of the mirror. It's nice. It's reflective learning in many ways. <laughs> okay, moving on. The next one I call collocation fun. Right? Collocations are words that are often used together. Right? Like we talk about heavy rain. Heavy rain. In English, we don't say big rain. Today there's big rain. No, there is heavy rain. So these are collocations. Collocation fun is where we're going to practice speaking、um, using a very common teaching method from really based on the task-based approach to teaching,、um, and it's based on prepare,、um, practice, present. So we'll be preparing. The words, the collocations, practicing sentences, and then presenting a whole talk. Okay.、Um, now, the reason I suggest doing this in front of the mirror、um, is that actually there are great benefits of talking to a mirror. Right. First of all, mirrors don't answer back <laughs> like young children or wives. But apart from that, right, when you're speaking in the mirror, you can look at your mouth and you can see the kind of movements that you're making, which is great, right?、Um, it's useful for pronunciation. You can also check your body language. You may be surprised to see that you speak like that without ever moving your arms, or that you suddenly realise that I, I'm doing this all the time.、Um, That's fine, but it's being aware of your body language can be quite good, and also you feel like you're talking to someone, right? Many people I know, and this happened to me, right? I practiced for a long time with a book, and when I went to speak to somebody in the foreign language, it was like a shock seeing this face in front of me. Oh my god! But practicing with the mirror. You've got used to a face in front of you, right? So it does help. So let's look then.、Um, prepare, practice, and present. Preparing. What I suggest you do here is you take a topic, right?、Mm, a recent topic we we were studying in the live lessons was、um, science, right? And then get some collocations. You can use your course book if you want. You can get onto the internet. You can go to this rather nifty little website.、Um, this one called、uh, Keith Speaking Academy, and in here, right, you have got free live lessons.、Um, you can go through to the free live lessons, and there was a recent one on science. So you can just、uh, download, right? Download the document. Yeah, we want to download that,、um, and then find in there all. The collocations. Look, you've got the notes here, and here you've got collocations. You've got idioms. You've got loads of stuff. And what I would do is I would take maybe six or seven collocations or idioms, like exact science. It's not rocket science to be on the same wavelength, and that's the preparation, right? That's step one. Step two is in front of the mirror. Just make a sentence with it, right? Exact science. Well, parenting,、uh, bringing up children, is not an exact science. Cooking is not an exact science. Frying an egg, it's not rocket science. It's actually quite easy, right? 
And then I'm just practicing sentences here. And then in the end, after practice, present. I take one of the old um, part two questions around science, maybe something like describe an area of science you're interested, and then start to talk about it for maybe a minute and trying, if possible, to use some of these phrases and sentences, right? So you may say something like this. Describe an area of science you're interested in. Well, okay, um, I guess an area I'm interested in actually is cooking. And I know it's not an exact science, but I guess it's a branch of science, a branch of food science, maybe, right? And I am interested in the science behind cooking. Um, I think it's, it's very interesting. I know with cooking, when you heat things up, they change. And when you mix different things like sugar and vinegar, you get different levels of acidity and chemical reactions happen. Um, so I think it, it's really, it's really interesting, right? I think chefs and scientists are really on the same wavelength, um, because they're trying to experiment, discover new things, whether it's cooking or new dishes, things like that. I know cooking isn't rocket science, um, but I am interested in, in how it works. And so, yes, although it's not a hard science, I think it's an interesting area of science for me. So you can see what I'm doing really here is not giving a perfect part to answer. I'm just trying to activate and practice some of these um, expressions that I've been learning. And that's it, really. So that's it. It's great because that preparing the collocations, practicing the sentences and then presenting a talk is a really tried and tested method. Do it in front of the mirror. Um, it's great. You get everything. You get the contact with somebody, you, um, but you can see yourself, you can monitor yourself. It's really, really effective. Collocation fun. Great. I want to go and do it. It sounds like so much fun. I'm going to do it again right now. <laughs> I'll be back in a moment. And next up is um, practice with short audios. Now, I am a big fan of extensive listening, right? Listening to podcasts and films, that's great. But when it comes to speaking, I think short audios are much better. They are bite-sized chunks, they're easy to use, and your concentration is shorter for shorter periods of time. You can work with, for example, recorded IELTS sample answers. There are many websites have those. Not written, it must be recorded, right? You want to listen and then speak. Um, there's a tool that I've talked about in the past to many of the, stu many of the, the students here. It's called LingQ. And I like it because it's full of short audios that you can use to help start speaking. And it's free. I mean, there is a paid version, but, you know, you can get lots of stuff for free, which is great here. So let me show you, first of all, how that might work. So this is LingQ, OK? Um, I'm not going to explain how it works. <clears throat> you can find that out once you kind of sign up for free. But basically, there's a library. Um, you choose your level here. So let's say I'm going to go intermediate. Um, and you can choose down here different audios to listen to. I've got one of my previous lessons here about sport that I will open up. Um, and let me just show you briefly how it works. We'll just focus on the bit on the left, okay? Okay, let's try. Hello, Stephen. Hello, Steve. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. So what I want you to focus on first is as you listen to the sentence, pick out the stressed words. Nice to see you. Nice see you. Uh, I'd like to chat a bit about uh, your interest in sports. Chat, interest, sports. So I'm just repeating the stressed words. Chat, da -da -da, interest, sports. Sure. Uh, you lived in Japan for quite a few years, I think. That's lived Japan years, I think. Right, about nine years. Nine years. 
nine years. Okay, so you can see I'm just doing the word stress. And also, you can also pick out chunks or phrases that you like or that sound interesting. Years, and I think you lived in different cities. That's right. I lived in Sendai for four years, which is a little bit north of Tokyo. A little bit north. A little bit north. That's interesting. Which is a little bit north, right? Not in the north. Not located in the north. Is a little bit north of. Nice. Uh, Tokyo for four years, and then one year down south in Shikoku. Down south. Interesting. Not in the south. Down south. Okay. And uh, did you play any sports when you were in Japan? A little bit. I. A little bit. I love that. A little bit. A little bit. Played a little bit of soccer. In I played a little bit of soccer. A little bit of soccer. Isn't that great? So you can see I'm picking out either the stressed words or little phrases or chunks that I like. And this is really helping us listen and prepare for speaking. Next, what you'll do after you've finished, um, if you want, you can check the tape, tape script um, as you listen again. That's fine. But at the end, what I would like you to try and do is try to repeat the audio or the lesson, giving a summary. So repeating it with your words, not reading, not listening. In fact, you can just close that <laughs> and focus on your own words, right? Oops. And then after you've done that and you've done a bit of practice, you could then try to retell the lesson or the story um, and record yourself. If you're not sure, you can use your, there's mobile apps to record your voice. Um, there's Vocaroo, which is also a very simple online voice, re voice recorder. Um, and recording yourself is great because it puts pressure on you. And that, my friend, is good. Also, you can then, once you've listened back, go and compare to the original lesson or story um, with the tape script and see if it's different. Did you make a mistake? Instead of saying a little bit of football, did you say a little bit football? Or did you use different collocations, right? Instead of individualized sports, did you say personal sports? Something different. That noticing, again, puts pressure on you, which is great. Um, and it also helps you notice. A noticing language is a kind of feedback, which is essential to improve. So that's it. Practice with short audios. Right, the next one is really fun. And it's, a, it's about imitating your favourite English-speaking actor or actress. OK, so here, when you watch a film in English, take some of the actors that you really like and pretend to be them. Right. So you're copying their body language, their gestures, their facial expressions, their accent, their voice, their words. You're copying everything. Why does this work? Because it's all about identity. A key part of language learning is your identity as an English speaker. And as students, we often have a mask or we can create a mask that we hide behind when we speak a foreign language. Um, and this can be very, very helpful um, to reduce anxiety or stress, especially if you're shy and or you're you don't want to you're embarrassed of mistakes and of not speaking correctly. When you have this mask to hide behind, it doesn't matter because you're being somebody else. And it's great fun to do with it, do this with actors and actresses is that actresses is actresses <laughs> that you like. Let me show you a very, very simple example. There's a great actor um, called Rowan Atkinson. You may know him for 
Mr. Bean, but he plays a myriad of characters. And one of the recent ones is Johnny English, right? Let's have a look at Johnny English. He's the key to this case. I'm not sure I've ever met a man quite like you. Let me clear up the uncertainty for you. You haven't. Let me clear up the uncertainty for you. You haven't. <laughs> right? So it's that taking the character, try and do the voice and the whole body, and you become that character. Um, and you can do that when you're practicing speaking on your own, right? You probably don't want to do it when you're out and about at the shops or speaking to foreign people. Hello. My <laughs> they think you're Johnny English. They think you're mad. But when you're having fun at home, it can be great way a great way to practice. So that's it. Imitate your favourite English-speaking actor. The next one is to send audio messages, right? Now, when you're using, um, if you're using Facebook, WhatsApp, other social medias that have a chat facility, um, often we send text messages. You probably send them in your own language, but you could think about sending them in English, right? And go a step further, send an audio message rather than a written message because that will be practicing your English, okay? You can do this if you have some friends who maybe speak English or family members. You can have a bit of fun with them practicing sending messages to each other um, in, in English or an, any other language, right? I mean, we do this sometimes. It can be quite fun to do. And the great thing about sending audio messages um, is it's not like a live phone conversation where the pressure is there. You have time to prepare, to think about what you're going to say, to record it. And if you don't like it, delete it, record it again. But it doesn't have to be perfect, right? It's just about practice, not perfection, practice. Um, so sending audio messages is a great way to do it. Next up, imitate the English foreigner. Now, I'm sure most people can imagine or know how English people speak your language, right? If you've got tourists or you've met people from other countries who speak your language, how do the English people speak your language, right? Take that sound, that accent, and start to use it. So, for example, let's imagine I'm Spanish. Hola, soy español. Me llamo Miguel, por ejemplo, right? And I'm thinking, so how do English people speak Spanish? right? They don't speak perfectly. Hola, soy Miguel. They speak with an English accent, right? Hola, que tal estas? Yo estoy muy bien, gracias. So the Spanish person would try and speak Spanish with the English accent. Hola, yo estoy muy bien, que tal estas? <laughs> right? <laughs> and then switch to English, but keep that accent. Hola, que tal estas? Yo estoy muy bien. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Can you hear that? That the same pronunciation and accent is, is easy to switch. And suddenly, my English sounds English. It sounds great. right? That's it. I'm doing an example with Spanish, but you could do it with any other language, right? Think how English people speak your language. Speak your language with that accent and then switch to English, keeping that British accent or English accent or American accent. It really can be quite, quite useful um, and fun to boot. Great. Now, the next idea is shadowing. Of course, a shadow, right, if the sun is shining down, 
on the floor behind you, you have a shape the same as you, right? Dark. That's your shadow. The sun leaves a shadow. You leave a shadow. Um, and to shadow someone is to follow somebody. So if I shadow you, it means I'm following you. Sometimes detectives will shadow suspicious people, right? Now, in uh, language, when we shadow somebody, it can be just to repeat them. But you're very close behind them, right? Remember, wherever you go, your shadow follows very closely. So here, um, the thing to do is to find a short audio and to listen for maybe a minute and to repeat almost on top of the voice, but maybe a fraction of a second behind them. So you're just behind them, but you are really following them very, very closely. Do not wait for the sentence to finish and then repeat. This is different. This is being really close behind them. And it forces you to pick up on word stress and intonation. And if you focus on those two things, it really can help build up that speaking skill, word stress and intonation. Let me kind of demonstrate. So we've taken from Culips or Culips um, a little audio. First of all, I recommend you listen to the minute completely so you've got an idea of what it's about. And I've already done that because I'm well prepared. <laughs> and then the second time you listen and shadow. Let me show you how close we are behind it. I'm going to use my phone so you can hear properly. <laughs> so Jeremy, let's get into so, it. So Jeremy, let's get into it. About talk about how, how to talk about, to talk about how to talk about movies, how to talk about and, movies and, and music and the kind of artwork that enriches, that enriches our lives. This topic was, this suggested, topic was to suggested to us by one of our listeners, and she sent us, and she sent us email, email, which I will, which I will read, for read for everybody. Now, it I says... <laughs> Song An Li. OK, I think you get the idea, right? So it's different from wait, listen and repeat. It's shadowing, following closely. At first, it's very hard, but the more you do it, the more you'll be noticing word stress, intonation, even accent. I noticed I was picking up a Canadian accent. About. It's all about. <laughs> right. That is shadowing. Let's move on. So we've had shadowing, right? Now we're going to look at responding. What is responding? Well, put very, very simply, responding is you hear a question, you get an idea, you give an answer, you respond. The biggest problem students have is that they practice. They take a question, they know the question, they've prepared it, and they practice giving answers, right? What happens in the exam? Well, surprise, surprise, in part three, you get strange questions you weren't ready for. What do you think of globalisation? Um, um, uh, and what do you do? Well, first of all, <laughs> have something to say about globalisation, right? Make sure you've done a bit of research on the topics. Get some ideas. If you don't know, you can always say, oh, I haven't thought about that. Let me see, right? Use a, a time filler to gain time. But the most important thing is that in your practice, as well as looking at these topics, right, you need to practice responding. Because in part three in the exam, the biggest problem students tell me is they don't have an idea. I didn't know what to say. I wasn't expecting that. I just couldn't get my ideas out and speak. So you need to practice responding where you hear a question, you've got no idea what it is, you get an idea quickly and you answer, right? It's a bit of pressure, but as I mentioned before, a bit of pressure is good in your practice. Now, you can do this if you have a speaking partner really effectively, right? So what you do is one of you says, I'm going to bring in to our next session five questions and you don't know what they are. And the other person does the same. 
and you come into your session and you ask each other these surprise questions. And it's a shock at first, but it's like anything. It's like going down the gym. You just practice this and you build up the skill. If you haven't got a speaking partner, um, you can do a bit of practice on my YouTube channel, right? If you know my YouTube channel, right? English speaking success. Um, hidden away <laughs> in the playlists, go on the playlists. There's lots here that you've probably never seen. And at the very bottom, you'll see two called responding, right? Responding cities, part one and part three. And what I've done here is I've recorded several questions with a gap for you to answer and then the next question. So if you go into, for example, the one part one and you press the shuffle button, the questions come at you in a random order and it works a bit like this. I mean, let me just play it for you and you'll see. Let's press shuffle and it plays automatically. Do you like your hometown? Oh, that's a good question. Do I like my hometown? Um, yeah, I think my hometown, Manchester, um, which is up in the north of England, is a very uh, attractive place. Um, there's lots of restaurants and shops. It does attract quite a few tourists as well. And, and they often come in um, to see the industrial landscape or the football pitches. We have a famous football team um, called Manchester United and Manchester. Do tourists like to visit your hometown? Yeah, there are quite a lot of tourists who come to visit my hometown. So you see what's happening, right? It's just automatically asking me the next question. And I practice responding because I don't know what the questions are because it's shuffle random. So you can practice that. You can also make your own, right? Set up your own YouTube channel. Um, don't worry about people finding it. They rarely do. Um, and you just put some questions up with a gap for the answer and then shuffle and Bob's your uncle. Fantastic. That's it. The next uh, suggestion is describe what you are doing. And I know a lot of teachers um, suggest this as a way of um, thinking in English, right? So when you're out and about, out and about, when you're out and about, maybe in the park and you're seeing different things, you describe what you see. Now, I suggest you start with words. Right. So there you are out and about in the park and you see, oh, bicycle, person, path, trees, bag, woman, phone. Um, and you're using words. Right. And then, right, as you're walking around the park, you make collocations, little chunks of language. Right. Um riding a bike, a long path, um, a cluster of trees, um, the woman glued to her phone, um, picnic, having a picnic maybe, right? And then you go on to make sentences, okay? This is a bit like that we mentioned earlier, the prepare practice present. So you're going from words to collocation to sentences, right? Oh, there's a man strolling in the park. There's a woman riding a bike. And also there are lots of trees. There's a woman glued to her phone and she looks like she's about to have a picnic. And you go on and on and on, right? It's great. You can do it in any context. You can do it at home or when you're out at the shops, wherever. Now, you may think and you may say, yeah, but Keith, you can't go around the streets talking to yourself. People think you're mad. Well, yes and no, right? Nowadays, put these on, right? Nowadays, people walk around and they're on the phone and like, hello, yeah, John, yeah, yeah, I'm in the park, actually. Yeah, it's lovely. There's, there's a man strolling over there. There's a woman riding a bicycle. Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Right. That's perfectly normal to be talking to yourself in the streets. Right. And 
if you're not comfortable with that, <laughs> you can pretend that you're Johnny English, right? Pretend you're a spy. Um, hello? Yes, there's a, there's a man walking along a path. There's a woman riding a bicycle, and I think, I think there's a, a woman glued to her phone, and she's going to, she's about to have a picnic. Call in the police. Get Johnny English. Whoa. <laughs> Pretend to be a spy. I don't know. It's very, very normal. But the key, speak out and go from words to collocation to sentences. Great practice. You can do it at home as well. I mean, I'm talking about getting some fresh air. Um, nowadays, that's not so easy, right? In fact, if you've got a little mask, you could speak behind your mask. Nobody need know. Or just stay home and do it. <laughs> and the next one, la 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 la, is to sing in English, right? Find a song you like in English get the lyrics, sing along. It's great way because, why? Because you pick up on melody, intonation, connected speech, contractions, weak sounds, all those pronunciation features really come out very strongly in songs um, through the melody. So it really is a very powerful way to practice. And don't worry if you're out of tune, I am Mr. Out of Tune. Seriously, I just cannot hold a note or a tune at all. But that doesn't stop me singing in the shower or anywhere because I enjoy it, right? So don't worry about that. Just practice. If you're not sure where to go, check out this website, right? Lyrics Training. Again, there's lots of stuff for free um, and you can have a bit of fun with it. Let me show you briefly how it works lyricstraining.com. You can get it as an app, which is probably the best way to do it. But just to show you, I'll go to the web. Um, you can choose any song on here. Um, most of them come from YouTube, I think. But let's take Perfect by Ed Sheeran. And then the game mode. So you decide if you're a beginner, let's say I'm intermediate. And here we're going to fill random words. So it's actually a game as well as practice. Play the video to start the game. I found a love. I found a love. I've got to I fill it in. For me. For me. Darling, just now look at that. It stops if I don't give the answer. For me. Darling, just dive right in. Right in. Follow my lead. Right in. Dive right in. Dive right in. Follow my lead. Follow my lead. I found a girl. Was it and follow my lead? Follow my lead. Follow my lead. Well, I, I found a girl. girl. <laughs> I found a girl. There we go. I think you get the idea. Beautiful and sweet. Beautiful and sweet. Well, I Listen. never knew. You get the idea. Um, have a bit of fun with it. So that's it. Go and sing a song. Next up is Tong Twisters. Tong, a uh, twist. Uh. Um, things that are difficult to say. And this really is a focus on pronunciation, um, but they're a lot of fun and they're good to try. Um, they help, help you focus on specific sounds and they're fun. The idea is to, to repeat the sounds um, or the, the, the riddle, if you like, three or four times until you get more fluent with it. And basically, it's a bit like a gym workout for your mouth. Because again, one of the really important things about speaking is in English, you're using different muscles from your own language. And very often you're not practicing those muscles enough. Tongue twisters are a great way to do it. For example, right? The ragged rascal ran round the ragged rock. Good for your R's, right? Try it two or three times. The ragged rascal ran round the ragged rock. The ragged rascal ran round the ragged rock. The ragged rascal ran round the ragged rock. Mm. Or 
she, I can't even say she, she sells seashells on the seashore. She sells, she, uh, she sells seashells on the seashore. It's better if you don't read it because then you're fo- focusing on the right sounds. But that's the s and the sh. It's really good. You can make up your own, right? Find the, the, the consonants or the vowels that you struggle with. Make them up. It's mainly consonants, actually. Peter Piper picked a pick a peck a pickle peck a pepper. Blah, 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 blah. You could just say, well, Peter picked a plump plum. Peter picked a plump plum. Right. Make it up. Great way to practice. Really good for pronunciation. Next, practice idioms with Euglish. Now, Euclid is an amazing website. It's very, very simple to use. It's basically um, like YouTube, but with clips. So you can take any phrase, and I think about idioms here. You input the idiom, and it gives you lots of video clips using that idiom. And you just practice. So you can imitate the intonation, the sound. You can get some context for the idiom, which always helps, right? Um, and it's a really, really effective way to do it. Let's have a look how it works. This is Yuglish. Um, uh, you put in basically a, a word or an expression. Let's take, for example, an idiom. Um, I don't know if you know this one. Pull your socks up, which basically means um, to do better, to work harder, to do better. Um, so to work harder, to improve your performance, if you like. You need to pull your socks up. My teacher at school would always say, come on, Mr. O'Hare, it's time to pull your socks up. So if we want to see this in different contexts. So he's been told, come on, pull your socks up, move. That was so fast. Let's move to the next one. We're given eight clips here. The next one. You had to pull your socks up. You had to pull your socks up. American, right? You had to pull your socks up. So you can hear and just, it's nice for repetition and also context, which helps you. That was how you got your network by improving, right? That was how you got your network. Or- so you can move on, try another one. At a moment like this, pull up your socks. At a moment like this, pull up your socks. Pull, your, pull yourself together and put down the phone. Pull yourself together and put down the phone. Right. So, again, you can see the words. Um, you can rewind. At a moment like this. You can control pull- the sound and you can check different examples pull up your socks by just needed. clicking on to the next one. Okay. Pull up your own socks. Pull up your own socks. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> right. That's it. That's Euglish. So that's it. You can use it for vocabulary, but I like it for idioms um, because that's often the difficult thing that a lot of students find to use naturally. So any work you can do on idiom practice is going to help. <clears throat> Great. Let's move on. Right. Okie dokie. Next up, immerse yourself in English. Immerse, surround yourself in English. I think it's well known through research that the more you can be immersed in English, the more you're going to learn. Um, I suggest you do a lifestyle audit. An audit is like a check or a checklist, right? So where do you use English and where do you use your mother tongue? So think about when you're using your phone, using your computer. Think about the settings on your phone and computer. Is it in English or your mother tongue? When you're um, texting, sending messages, participating on Facebook in English or mother tongue, listening to podcasts, watching films, listening to music, songs, reading books, how much is in English and what can you switch to English to help immerse yourself more in English? Now, a lot of this is passive, right? Rather than actively speaking, it's giving yourself the opportunity to listen, read and see more English, but also to use it. In some of those cases, like on the phone or messages, you can also be using English. So check out, do a lifestyle audit. Now,
we're coming on to two really important points here, and these are much kind of bigger vision points. First about goals and then about habits. So first goals. Set yourself some short-term goals about speaking English. Okay. If you just think, I'm going to practice and keep on practicing, it's all very loose and airy-fairy and nice, but you won't keep going. I think people like frameworks, restrictions, limits, goals, paths. Um, not everybody, but it works well for a lot of people to set yourself a goal, right? So for the next four weeks, I'm going to speak English uh every Monday, Wednesday, Friday for 20 minutes. That's it. What's so good about that is that you can measure it. You can just tick off. And at the end of the four weeks, you can see how much you've done. Um, as you're ticking off, it's motivating you to keep going. So it's nice to measure. With goals, um, there's the famous writer James Clear who talks about atomic habits, right? He talks about breaking down goals into smaller goals. And I think it's really important. Rather than saying, for the next six months, I will practice an hour every day, which is very big and difficult, say, for the next week, I'll do five minutes a day. Right? Set yourself up to win. Make the goals really, really simple. Five minutes a day for the next week. I mean, that you can't go wrong. And once you've done that, then you step it up and you make it more challenging. OK, so do yourself a favor, set yourself up to win. And on the point of goals, there's going to be a day where you're just too tired and fed up and you don't want to do it. Right. There's a little trick, which is it's called the one minute trick. Right. So you thinking today I've said I'm going to speak for 10 minutes. Right. But I just can't. Oh, I've got the baby screaming. I've got to prepare dinner. I've got this to do and that to do. I just don't can't do it. Right. The one minute trick is you say to yourself, OK, I'm just going to take one minute to practice. So instead of 10 today, I do one minute, but I don't stop. I don't say I'm not going to do it. I still do it, but just one minute and try that. What ha often happens is after a minute, once you've started, you think, well, I might as well do another couple of minutes now that I've started. And actually, you often end up doing 10. But the one minute trick is really powerful. So check it out. Next, habits. If possible, when you've got your goals and your speaking practice, um, try and do the same place at the same time every day. It helps build a habit. Um, and also, if you have a cue, right, that is the same, that indicates I'm going to do it, the cue could be a time, right? 11 o'clock every morning, that's my English time. Boom. When I brush my teeth in the morning, remember, in front of the mirror, that's my English time. Two minutes just speaking about what I'm going to do. Have that cue, same place, same time every day makes it much more easier. No, much easier. <laughs> Classic native speaker mistake. So that's all about habits. Finally, you thought we would never arrive at the end, right? The last piece of advice is to join a community. Because often when you're speaking alone, it can be a lonely experience, right? So even though your practice is alone at home, having some kind of contact with the community, even if it's reading, writing, typing, can be very motivating. Um, so there are lots of Facebook groups. I mean, I have one, but you can choose any Facebook group. Um, if you want to find out mine, link below. But being a part of a community can really help just motivate you. Even if you're not speaking, you can speak in, uh, in my community. Um, some people record themselves. Great. But you can practice at home on your own. But just having people you're sharing your learning with is very powerful. That is it. All of these, I hope, interesting, useful and great ideas for you. 
Great. So there are lots of ideas there. I hope you can take some of these and start practicing speaking when you're at home alone. I think it's all a question of confidence, right? The more you speak, the more confident you get and the more ready you are for your IELTS um, speaking test. Also, I hope if you practice these, you can be ready to move up to the next step because I do think it's also important to interact with people. And maybe this can help you get ready to find a speaking partner or speak with a friend in English or even find a teacher where you can go and practice more and more. Whichever way you go, enjoy it and have fun with English as well. I'd like finally just to say a big thank you again to Camberley because if you are ready now for a teacher, Cambly is a great place to go. Online learning, you can choose which teacher you like, the topics you want to discuss and when you want to practice. It's great, right? They can also record lessons. They have in-chat translations if you need it. It's really great value for money. So go and check it out and you'll get a discount. Check out the details below. For the first time users, you can get a nice discount on their offer as well. Brilliant. So listen, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, do like it, share it with others, subscribe to the channel English Speaking Success. Um, and that's it. I look forward to seeing you very soon. Take care, my friend. Bye-bye.